Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the third day of November in the year of our Lord, 2023. Unfortunately, we're all still here. <laughs> the planet hasn't destroyed itself yet. Okay, so uh, this might be a momentous day. Uh, Nezrallah, who is the leader of Hezbollah, uh, is going to have a public address, a rare public address today someplace in Lebanon. I see they were, I think it's in Lebanon, they were setting out the chairs. <sighs> Hopefully the, the crazies in Israel will not try to uh, assassinate him, which would be uh, the immediate cause of Belli. And, uh, oh, that would really ignite things. And they're crazy enough to do that. We live in a world that because of human ingenuity, We've created a situation where we're able to destroy the entire planet. And it only takes a few madmen to do that. And right now we have madmen, uh, incompetence, uh, moral, morally incompetent people in places like the United States and the, uh, the Zionist state of Israel. And I'm using that word for a reason. Uh, I was... Uh, I worked as an engineer. Okay, what do engineers do? You're given a problem and you're told to create a solution to this problem. Uh, and I tend to do that. So we have a problem in this world and it is the uh, genocide that's going on in Gaza and the West Bank now too, although it's not as extreme in the West Bank yet. It'll get there. So what do you do? Uh, you've got a situation that's a threat to the entire planet, and and uh, right now the death toll is approaching 10,000 in Israel of the Palestinians. Um, and again, as I've said before, Israel provoked this whole thing during the, the week price preceding uh, uh, October 7th, during the week of Sukkot. The Israeli government led a series of provocations on the Temple Mount, on uh, the uh, El uh, Alaska compound, designed to provoke the Palestinians, to provoke the Muslim world, and they succeeded. And Hamas said that's why they did what they did on the 7th. That's why it's called El Alaska Flood, because of what Israel was doing on El Alaska, the, the uh, what Christians and Jews refer to as the Temple Mount, where the, the Jewish temple once stood uh, 2,000 years ago. So that is, a, that is the third holiest shrine of Islam, and it is a place that is exclusively for the worship of Muslims and Israel has generally recognized that in the past, and now the crazy government of Netanyahu is trying to overthrow that, throw that because one of their goals is not only a Judenstaat, a ethnically pure or religiously pure a Jewish state, but also to rebuild the Jewish temple, the Temple of Solomon, the Temple of Herod. Uh, on the site where the mosque and the Dome of the Rock currently are. Yes, that's where the temple once was. Yes, it was, definitely. However, uh, this is insanity. You want to start World War III? Well, that's how you start it. There are one and a half or more billion Muslims in this world. You want to light everything on fire? Well, let's throw gasoline all over the place and start throwing matches. Striking the matches and throwing them. Well, that's what Israel's doing. They're out of their minds. Well, in the United States, we've got the same problem here, too. You've got people that are out of control. This, We happen to be living in a particularly dangerous time, and it's probably the time of the end. And things are just going to get crazy. But that doesn't mean we should be involved in starting the fires. We should be involved in trying to put the fires out. You know, Christians do that. I remember 
a few years ago, I was driving down the street here in front of my house. We're sort of out in a rural area, semi-rural, and uh, there was a grass fire burning along the road. I suppose somebody had thrown a cigarette butt out. It was a dry time, and I got out and I started stamping the fire out. Well, that's what Christians should be doing, you know. You, you, you just don't let a fire just spread if you got any kind of means at all to do something about it. You say, well, I'm going to call the fire department. No, it's not very big. You get out and stamp on it. You put it, try to put it out. You don't wait for it to develop for half an hour waiting for the fire department to, to rally its forces and finally get on scene. No, put it out. So we've got fires going on in the world today, and do what you can. I, I'm, uh, I don't. I only have a microphone. I'm an old man with a microphone and hardly any kind of a, uh, an audience. But nevertheless, if I see a fire going, I got to do what I can to put it out. Now we all have that responsibility before God. It has to do with loving your neighbor, loving your enemies, loving God. Do what's good for others, not just your own interest. Yeah, it wasn't the best thing for my boots. But it was the right thing to do. And what's, we are, as Christians, we're supposed to do the right thing because we love God. And he puts that love in us, his love in us. So do what you can. You've got one voice, at least. Do what you can. And we see this great injustice, this grave injustice of, of what's going on in, in uh, Gaza. And we have to speak out. There was many people in Germany that didn't speak out. They simply ignored the problem. They pre pretended it didn't exist. They could see the wire. They could see the smoke. Just as today, we can see the wire. We can see the smoke of the Israeli bombs. The American bombs that Israel is dropping on ci ci civilians to kill civilians. This is outright murder. And America is up to here in it. The Biden administration. That man could stop it with one telephone call. But they've all been bought off by powerful interests. Biden has spent a lifetime. You know, how does people like Biden or George W. or Obama or some of these others get into power? Trump. Trump is a little bit of an exception because... He didn't need oligarchs behind him. But the special interests, they you look at why are there so bad such bad choices for president? Why are we given such bad choices? Because there are interests that don't do not want good, strong leaders that will resist them. They're deathly afraid of somebody like Teddy Roosevelt getting into power. Those kind of people only get into power by accident. <laughs> because the, the established powers will do everything they can to get rid of them. Like Roosevelt, trust, with his trust busting, his anti-monopoly uh, uh, reforms, uh, but what, what's going on in Israel right now the United States is is enabling genocide, uh, blocking uh, the voice of the Security Council. Uh, the, the General Assembly doesn't have any teeth, and the Security Council really doesn't either, but the United States is a full accomplice in genocide, in ethnic cleansing, and what's going on. Uh, Biden is, uh, at best, the best thing I could say about Biden in this is that he's incompetent. He is not morally competent. He's not mentally competent to uh, and does not have the strength of character or physically to uh, to be able to do what he ought to do. And he could do with one phone call if he had a spine. He no longer has a spine. Uh, and never did have a spine. And that's the kind of people that uh, the the powers in the United States want his president, somebody that's easily manipulated, somebody that is subject to bribery, somebody that you can control. And Biden, they've got the ideal person in, in that place. 
And you've got the Congress and the Senate dominated by those kind of people, people that have been bought off already, that have sold their soul long ago. And if you haven't sold your soul, you don't last longer in that institution. You, you will lose your soul or you will leave or be forced out. <clears throat> That's the nature of the beast or the harlot. Not really the beast here. This is the Babylon the Great, at least part of it, the center of it. There's a lot of reasons for that. But uh, what do we do as Christians? Well, yesterday I went out and went for a walk with God. And some people say, you can't go for a walk with God. Yes, I do. Every time I go for a walk, I go for a walk with God. Every place I go, I go with God. What else can I do? He dwells in me, but not exclusively in me. Yes. So if, it, if you're a real Christian, I mean, even, even if you're, if you hold the Christian doctrine, the doctrine that the Holy Spirit dwells in, in his people, you, you, how can you go for a walk without going with God? But nevertheless, I was spent some time talking to, with him and trying to listen and let him enlighten my me. <laughs> because otherwise, I'm just darkness without his light. So, uh, and that's bringing this problem before him because this is this is a serious, serious, serious issue in a very serious part of the world. And I I believe that we do live in the in the last days in a very very close to the last time and. Even if the world decides to go up in flames, that, that doesn't mean we have to agree with it. We don't want to be part of the problem. These crazy Christian Zionists that rah, 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 and they're probably out there cheering Israel and say, kill them all, kill them all. Well, God will judge them along with God, uh, God judging Israel. Uh, there are certain divine principles that are, uh, not a, are unavoidable. Uh, like the law of retribution, that uh, as you sow, so shall you reap. Sow good, reap good. Sow evil, reap evil. It's built into the moral universe. And <clears throat> there are some ways to get forgiven things, but somebody else had to pay the penalty, but that was Christ. So uh, what's going on now is so much in your face, the entire world can see it. We have no excuse. We can't claim ignorance. If you've been paying any attention at all, of course, if you only watch mainstream media, you just got the the lying side. Uh, because this is this is uh, Israel started this the week prior to the seventh of October, the government of Israel, with their deliberate provocations on the Temple Mount on Al Aska, uh, deliberately looking to incite a reaction that they could use to justify ethnic cleansing, further ethnic cleansing, and genocide. And they've got the reaction they wanted. And now they are implementing their program. And they've got uh, Biden, who is not competent to resist them, just, uh, uh, yeah, 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 of course you're right. Yeah, yeah, we got to do this. We gotta... No, he's not a competent individual anymore. Uh, nor was he of such a character that he ever was particularly uh, he's pliable. Let's put it that way. He's pliable. And he surrounded himself with people, including uh, th that, that are not unbiased, and they are not, have, have no moral compass either. They are not godly people. And even some godly people have been deceived because they've, they've been taught lies, too. Lies like dispensationalism. It's a lie. Lies like uh, Jewish exceptionalism, that they are his, they are still his chosen people. No, you, you have to abide in the covenant to be God's chosen people. And the old covenant has been replaced by the new. You're only God's people if you are part of the new covenant, which was brought in by Jesus Christ. The old covenant's obsolete. It's kaput. It's done. It's finished. He fulfilled it. It's no longer in force, nor can you bring it back in force by building a temple. God will not honor that. It's not his will. He's brought something in far better for everyone, not just for the Jews, but for the entire world. And if you reject that, 
Well, you've rejected God and eternal life and God's forgiveness and everything else. So, if, you know, some people uh, have not rejected it because they don't know about it. Other people ha do know about it. It's written in their law and their prophets, and they still reject it. They reject their Messiah who came 2,000 years ago. And they need to repent of that, and they manifest their rejection and what they're doing now. Uh, so it, it, the God is angry with those who reject the light he has given them. That's Romans chapter 1, starting at verse 18. It is not about God's judgment on particular sins. That is about what happens to people who reject the revelation that they have from God, including the revelation in creation. You know there is a creator. You know there is a God. You're responsible to God for that knowledge. If re you reject it and turn away to polytheism or Mormonism or some other nonsense like that, reject the fact that there is one creator, there is one real God, then you come, you are God, you come under the anger of God because you've rejected the truth that he has definitely made known to you. All creation testifies to his existence. So, and there are some that reject that. And they are not, they, were, they are without excuse, as the apostle writes there without excuse in the sight of God. Uh, but again, God, that, that anger, the anger of God in the Bible is never directed toward ignorance. It is directed toward deliberate rejection of the light of the truth and the truth that God has made known to you. So those who have much access to truth, much access to God's word, are more accountable because they have more light. And if they reject it, they will uh, experience more severe judgment. <clears throat> so let's go to the situation over there. As an engineer, I just have to, how would I solve this problem? You know, that's what, that's, when I was working out, I'd have a project or something to do. They'd say, oh, we, we have this, we need this, something that does this, and I would have to come up with a solution to their problem. And so, you know, why not solve the problem of the world while I'm at it? Uh, I know what the ultimate solution is, okay? It's not difficult. It's just, so we have an immediate situation here. So what is the immediate situation? Christ hasn't returned yet. That is the, is the answer to this world right now, is that he must return. Um, but as far as this immediate thing, what, what could we do uh, right now to stop the genocide that's going on, the deliberate genocide that is now spreading to the West Bank? See, part of the purpose, the, the way that people manipulate and, and evil powers manipulate things is they will incite, uh, they, they use incitement and uh, uh, provo uh, provo provocations to incite emotions, because emotions are much more uh, manipulatable, manipulable, <laughs> easy to manipulate than uh, reason and rational ideas, thinking, rational thought. So what you do, and, and they, they inflame, you want to inflame the passion. So you need a, a massacre to justify you massacring some people uh, and taking actions that would never before have been approved by people, that you, like 9-11. 9-11. Hmm. <laughs> You're just thinking, what, what's there? could there have been some reason that was brought about? Well, that was, I know why it came about, but there's, there could have been dark forces behind that, too. Who knows? There's lots of conspiracy theories, but uh, we want to look at the truth and the facts. So it's 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 very clear that Israel deliberately incited uh, the the power that not Israel I should say the uh, Israeli regime, the current regime, the Netanyahu regime, or particular elements in that regime. Uh, Netanyahu is not the uh, uh, he is 
he is not really in control. Uh, the the radical fringe parties are in control because of their system of government. They can do it. Uh, people like Ben Gavir, um, who should be in prison someplace, not in power, uh, they are in control. And they are the ones that led the deliberate incitements. I don't know if Netanyahu was, had knowledge of it or not, but he's still responsible as the Prime Minister of England, or England, Israel. Uh, so anyway, those incitements on the Temple Mount led to October 7th, and that's what Hamas says themselves. That's why they did it. Alaska flood. But you're not told by the media. You're not told by mainstream media the truth. They don't understand it anyway. They are Those people are secularists. They have no concept of, of religion and the kind of passions that religion can evoke including Christians. Uh, the devotion that people can have for God, whether they're Jewish, Christian, or Muslim. Well, Christians, we should understand some of this stuff. So, what can be done now? The United Nations has no teeth even if it wasn't uh, blocked by the United States and its uh, puppets, its uh, lapdogs, its vassal states like France and the UK, and you know the permanent members have uh, a permanent veto power. So no matter what the rest of the world says, the United States can block it, unless the United States gets kicked out. <laughs> The U.N. should sanction the United States. The United States is a rogue nation, too. Uh, the, any nation that thinks that they are the, the uh, world hegemon is a threat to the rest of the world. They are not a force for good. They are a force for evil. Uh, capitalism is a wicked, evil system that results in nothing good. Uh, it result, the materialism of capitalism results in the destruction of the planet. And I'm not an environmental person. I don't believe in the, the panics of climate change and everything else because I believe in God, and God has built a robust system, and he will intervene anyway. So uh, I'm not driven by these uh, artificially created panics that occur quite frequently. I've seen enough of them in my lifetime to know they're frauds. Uh, there was the all kinds of things, uh, and God has has created enough resources in this planet for this time until Christ returns, and then things will be somewhat different. And capitalism will not exist then, by the way. Just so you know, capitalism will be done away with because it is evil. The, the accumulation of riches and power in the means of production is what capitalism is about. It is not simply about... Uh, private property and uh, having a, a business, being able to have freely have a business where you can support your family with. That is not capitalism. That is not capitalism at all. That is what historically has existed, where you have every, every person having their own plot of ground. Uh, in fact, the millennium, it talks about every man will dwell under his own vine and his own fig tree. See, God's ideas of what's good is not what uh, uh, commonly is thought of in this world. Uh, Adam Smith is a rogue and an idolater and uh, created an ideology or religion of, that postulated that greed and self-interest is a good thing. Adam Smith who wrote the book Wealth of Nations, which uh, coincidentally was published in 1776. Just in time to corrupt America. Of course, you have to really have to have corporations for capitalism to become the, the monster it becomes, and then you end up with oligarchs uh, in places like Russia. And you know, I, th I think about Russia. Putin is. I think he'll go down in history as one of the, if not the greatest, one of the greatest leaders of Russia, and. 
his fight against the oligarchs, the out of uh, in the United States, we had our period in the late 19th century where you had the robber barons, and the robber barons are the same as the oligarchs. Um, and sometimes you have to use, uh, as the head of Russia, I mean, he's been criticized for for some of his actions or what some people's actions were, but in that position, you cannot apply, uh, well, you talk America and American you know, principles of justice, well, you actually look at how it actually carried out, especially today, it's, it's, a, it's a farce, it's a farce. Due process, well, sometimes due, due process is using the power of the state, uh, lethal authority of the state without having, uh, resorting to courts. And in war, that's always the case. So if you're, uh, if you're, uh, the existence of the welfare, say, of Russia is threat uh, threatened by oligarchs who control everything, and the only way to save Russia is to uh, eliminate their power or eliminate them, then a, a Christian ruler is responsible to do those actions, just like David and other kings in the Old Testament. There is a responsibility for a person who is, a, well, uh, Putin is a declared Christian. He pra is a practicing uh, Russian Orthodox. He was baptized as a Russian Orthodox secretly by his mother when I think he was like 10 years old. So it's interesting, and he acts like a Christian as far as a, a Christian ruler should act. The special operation in Ukraine is justified as a Christian, and he's very restrained, surprisingly so. So some people will say, well, you're just an apologist. Well, okay, yeah, I'll apologize for Putin when he does what is right all the time. I, I can't apologize for Biden because he never does anything right. He's a corrupt, he was, he's a morally incompetent person. Uh, again, there's, there's times when a, a Christian leader throughout history, I mean, righteous leaders in the Old Testament too, had to do things exercising their authority as the head of state uh, to, uh, to wield the sword. Just like in England, you have the king. Well, you used to have a king. And the king didn't always have to resort to the niceties of, of, of due process when the survival of the state was at, at stake. And that's what you have in war, too. There are different rules in war. There are rules, but they're different. So when America tries to smear things, American media smear people for actions that were actually just considering the circumstances, then... That's just because they're corrupt and don't want to understand anyway. I didn't know any of this stuff until Ukraine, the Ukraine conflict started, and I started investigating. And I thought, huh, yeah. This is a, a uh, special military operation. This is not a war of conquest. Uh, and don't, you can't believe anything the lying media in the West says because they're thoroughly corrupted. They are thoroughly corrupted. The neocons are thoroughly corrupt. They are wicked, evil people that cannot be allowed to have power. And who do we have in power? The neocons. And they manipulate a very weak president, and they like that. They can, he's a man that's easily manipulated and controlled. Obviously, he is not completely competent and never exhibited any kind of moral spine anyway, so in his personal life or in his public life. You can just look up his record in the Senate. It's a long record. Look at the pills he sponsored. How do we get such bad choices? Because the, the people that really control things want those kind of people in power so they can manipulate them. Putin doesn't fit that model. Trump didn't really either, but even he was controlled. Uh, the only thing Trump had going for him was not moral character, but the fact that he was relatively independent of money. He wasn't uh, indebted to donors the way most politicians are. So let's get off the United States, even though the United States has uh, a, a uh, very much a full 
measure of guilt in this whole thing that's going on in Israel. So now that the Ukraine situation has, uh, it is, it's in its determination stage, uh, Ukraine has completely lost. Uh, when you start trying to uh, impress the, uh, the amputees and women into your military force to fight in the front line, you've gone completely down to the bottom of the barrel and pretty much emptied that out. And uh, I see the other day Russia destroyed the last main big ammo dump in Ukraine. They put some kindles into it. Uh, yeah. And didn't manage to inflict any civilian uh, casualties. See, they've been, he's been deliberately, as I said, I am very impressed with, with President Putin. He is... Uh, very restrained. He acts like a Christian. He does act like a Christian ruler. I think he styles himself sort of a Christian prince after Vladimir the Great. Um, and that position would in require you to do some things in the interest of the people you're charged with protecting that a Christian wouldn't necessarily want to do, including shedding blood. Sometimes it's necessary because the other alternative was worse. It is, it is. It's Christians, if you're in a position of ruling uh, and have responsibility for the lives of many, it's, let me give you an example that most people could probably relate to. Um, sometimes self defense is a necessity, but more so the defense of others. Uh, I. For a while, I had a, a concealed carry permit. I don't anymore. Uh, but um, that pretty much because I figured, well, this country's gone so bad, I'm not going to try to hold it together. But, I mean, if, if, if my neighbor, and I'd still do it. If, if like, my, my neighbor was being assaulted, uh, somebody was uh, trying to rape my neighbor, or somebody was crying out for help, Something like that, where there was an assault going on, I'd probably grab the shotgun and, and go and uh, uh, apply force if necessary, which includes lethal force, which is completely uh, uh, legal in Illinois. In fact, even to intervene into a, a, a forcible felony, like uh, uh, that, that kind of uh, like a rape or uh, somebody beating somebody uh, in a way especially that would could be fatal, you are authorized by law to intervene and use whatever necessary force there is to, to stop it. You can't chase the guy down after he runs away and shoot him, but you can, I mean, to stop the, the, the felony that's in progress, a forcible felony. Uh, yeah. And would I do that? Yes, certainly, because love requires it. Love requires you at times to take the life of somebody, if necessary, in order to save others. The innocent, those who are not guilty of, you know, the, the criminal is guilty. And it's, it's not uh, it, when you're a witness to the very act, you have responsibility to act. If possible, if you have the means, if you don't, act, if you turn your back on, on evil, when you have the ability to act and the right to act, then you're an accomplice to the evil. You don't get to watch somebody rape somebody else. Just stand there and watch. No, you are required by God to intervene. And that's where just war comes into. There is a, uh, you know, if you're, if you're, especially for those that are in those kind of positions, Oh, I wish we would have President Putin for the United States on the ballot. <laughs> now, I'm not completely familiar with everything he's done, but uh, I think a lot of the things, again, if, if you're in that position and you're faced with things like ruthless oligarchs in your own country, and in order to establish a, a just society, sometimes it's necessary to use uh, force, if there's no other way. Again, principles of, of just war uh, use uh, the, the force necessary, but not more. Uh, 
to bring about justice. We got ruthless predators with their own private militias. Well, what do you have to use? It's what what is the United States supposed to be using against the drug gangs on the border? The military. This isn't a matter of courts. The uh, on the the southern border with the terrorist drug gangs. Those are uh, that is where the military is supposed to be used. It's not a matter of laws and courts. These are uh, ruthless enemies, organized enemies that are invading and murdering and uh, committing brutal bru uh, terrorists. I lived down in the Mex on the border for 10 years. You know, I don't even want to speak about some of the things I've done down there. they've done down there. They are so gruesome, what they've done to newspaper reporters. And it's not just on the Mexican side of the border. It's, you know, they control both sides of the river. Uh, too much of it. So there's areas that the, the trying to, to uh, the, the, the niceties of the judicial system has no place there. You're dealing with a different environment. You're dealing with a, a warlike environment with bandits that have to be treated in a different way than an organized crime uh, that, that is, is, uh, is a violent, dangerous terrorist organization that have to be treated differently, and it's not a matter of courts. It's a matter of the uh, the responsibilities of the the ruling authority to deal with them with the sword justly because a just punishment for murderers is to shed their blood as quickly as possible and that's how you bring about peace is you eliminate those who refuse to live in peace Sometimes you have to do that. It's just a matter of, you know, if you're in that position, that's what you got to do. If you're not in that position, you don't go. Vigilantism is not it. Again, there are situations. Actually, the, Illinois, the law in Illinois here is pretty good on this. That supposedly you can't be sued for doing this either. But if you're a witness to it and you have the, you, it doesn't require you to intervene. There are some states that have good Samaritan laws which actually require you to intervene, like a, an, uh, an accident along the road or something like that. If you just pass it by and ignore it, that you can be held uh, culpable for that. Uh, I don't know if they actually do that, but, you know, the idea is that you, again, love your neighbor. Uh, it's just an extension of love your neighbor uh, or an application of love your, love your neighbor. It's not an extension at all. That if you see someone being attacked brutally or whatever, that you have a, and you have the ability, you have the means. Um, uh, you know, if you got three young guys with baseball bats and 68-year-old man, there's, you might not have the means unless you've got a good baseball bat. To, just <laughs> uh, do what you can. It might be lock the doors and hit the horn on your car chase them off of your vehicle or something, but you, you have a responsibility before God to do what you can in those situations. Uh, but in Israel, so we see this, and uh, the whole world sees what Israel is doing, and there's a responsibility, especially for those that are there that have the ability to intervene. And I'm talking about these nations surrounding Israel. Uh, uh, Egypt and Saudi Arabia and Jordan and Saudi Arabia doesn't have a common border, but they're almost a common border. Uh, uh, Iraq and Syria and Lebanon and Turkey and Iran and, and Russia even, uh, because the United States and NATO are also a plague on the world, uh, along with Israel. Uh, they are not a force for justice. They are a force of corruption in the world. They are Babylon the Great. I would say, so that they are not helpful. They go around the world causing problems, not doing good. Currently, that's just where we are now. It's a bad situation for people that live in the United States, too. And there's not much we can do because the system's completely rigged here. 
And taking up arms against the government is not something that a Christian can do because Jesus has prohibited it. it. So, uh, but the nations around there, you have legitimate authority to do these things. You must intervene in the sight of God. And uh, uh, what Israel is doing is completely contrary to international law. They are, and the United States is blocking the UN. So, you are the ones responsible to, to act. You have the, the power of the sword to act in the interest of justice, in the interest of saving lives. Uh, you need to, uh, I think Egypt already has some forces on the uh, Gaza border, but it, uh, Egypt and Jordan and these other countries, they need to start moving their forces immediately toward the border and speaking to Israel and speaking at the United Nations and say, we will not permit this to go on because the, the uh, United Nations has been blocked by the United States, it's the, uh, the countries in the, nation, in the area must themselves act to stop this gross injustice that's going on now, to stop Israel from murdering thousands, going on 10,000 people. Murder, just outright murder. This is not war, this is murder. This is genocide. This is ethnic cleansing by definition. So uh, you, you can't stand by. You can't. And you can't rely on non-state actors like Hezbollah because they don't have uh, the legitimate power of the sword in the sight of God. They can act in concert with state actors. So if they are acting under legitimate authority, then it's a different situation. But they have to be acting under authority to be legitimate. And Hezbollah is not legitimate, uh, be, really, because it's not a legitimate government authority. Uh, it is a group. Now, so again, uh, and this, uh, you have to act. You can't just let this go on. You have to act in concert and publicly and declare your goals, and the goals can't be the destruction of the Jewish people that live there. They have to be the liberation of, of uh, this, this, the ending of the genocide and the liberation of these occupied territories, because this injustice is a festering sore. In spite of the current actions, this injustice is a festering sore, and you cannot have peace. See, Trump did not understand anything. Um, papering over the Palestinian injustice, the Nakba, is not a way to peace. It's not that, you know, it's not something that happened 2,000 years ago. It's, it's right now, and it's continuing. And Israel is continuing to steal Palestinian land and to murder Palestinians and to drive them out. The Nakba is continuing. What began in 1948, or actually sooner, is continuing, and it has to be stopped. The, the Zionist ideology has no legitimate place in this world. It is contrary. Zionism the, is Jewish exceptionalism. And there's many Jews that know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about Judaism in general. I'm not, not, certainly not talking about the Jewish people. Uh, there are problems in the Talmud, that I think uh, uh, knowledgeable Jewish rabbis, if, if I sat down and had a discussion with you, you would agree with me. And there's, there's issues in the Quran that uh, I think knowledgeable Muslim scholars uh, that would probably recognize there may be some things there, too, that if we want to live in peace, we cannot... Uh, we have to de-emphasize certain things. It's just like uh, the, uh, you know, there, there's things in the Old Testament that embarrass me as a Christian, and I have to look at that and say, well, God, we know God is just. He's absolutely just. And we don't know the entire circumstances of why he commanded certain things, but I can say that he, he left his, his 
the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in captivity in Egypt for 400 years, waiting until a time when it was just for them to dispossess those people in that land of Canaan because they had become so wicked, they were under God's judgment, his just judgment. So in that case, you have God himself declaring judgment using his people Israel as an instrument. But then he himself dispossessed those people several times on different occasions because of their injustice, because of their bloodshed, and because of their uh, failure to, to uh, be faithful to him. So God is just, and we have to, even if we don't understand the specific circumstances, we can rely on his character. That's what we have to do at times. But this, this, this Israel is not dispossessing the Palestinians at the command of, of God. No, this, uh, this Zionist uh, ideology is inherently unjust. Uh, they are not occupying, they're not, uh, even the very concept of a, a Judenstaat, a exclusively Jewish state, uh, is not God's plan in this world today at all. That was simply a temporary thing until God brought in uh, the Messiah and then initiated his real program for the future of the earth, which is now uh, we're waiting the return of Christ. So <laughs> that will be implemented then. But in the current time, you, we cannot simply tolerate this kind of blatant, criminal, evil activity that's going on in Gaza today by Israel. This is not simply retribution for October 7th, which was in fact instigated deliberately by elements in the Israeli government. So Egypt and, and Jordan and Syria and Lebanon are the frontline states here. You got to do something. Um, And to Dana Nasrallah is having is some sort of a speaking thing, but is 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 to have Hezbollah acting outside of legitimate government authority is problematic. I mean, there's governments that would like to see that, so they don't uh, end up bearing the consequences of that. But uh, the the governments in the area have to get together immediately and say, we're not going to permit, permit this, and tell Israel we're not going to permit this. We are going to intervene to liberate, uh, to stop the, the, uh, the genocide and the ethnic cleansing, and to liberate the occupied territories. They must be pushed back to at least the pre-67 borders. But beyond that, I think that that is, that is not a permanent solution because as long as you have a Zionist entity there, Zionism is incompatible with peace. It is incompatible with justice by its very nature. To say that a particular group, a ethnic religious group, has superior rights to everybody else is incompatible with today's world. And it is a result of the self-interest of humanity, not the, not, it, it is this expression of man's sinfulness that comes up with these kind of ide ideologies. Uh, it is not a, a matter of justice. It's a matter of sin, of self-centeredness, of selfishness. So we want special rights and misusing religion to justify things that are wrong in the sight of God. So, uh, but a, an action taken by the neighboring states must be uh, limited and explicit in its purpose, and they must restrain themselves to maintain that. And in concert, at least notifying and asking the General Assembly to, to uh, give approval to that kind of a, an action, even if they don't have the explicit power to do anything, they can voice approval. The world can voice their approval of particular goals. 
ending the genocide, uh, liberating the occupied territories, and putting a leash on Israel, I think, would be— uh, the dis disarmament of Israel. The, it's necessary that they be stripped of nuclear weapons in particular. These people cannot have control of nuclear weapons. You might consider disarming the United States of nukes, too, while you're at it. <laughs> the United States government—we uh, don't have a defense apart department. We have a, a department of offense. Uh, the policies of the United States in this world have to be altered radically. But there are oligarchic influences in the United States that profit greatly from the activities, the illicit activities of the United States government. Full many world or wars around the world. They make lots of money off it. The military industrial complex. The military industrial congressional complex. The United States got lots of problems, but right now we've got a genocide going on with the United States backing. So the world's going to have to act because the United States is not a force for good. It's a force for evil right now. Uh, and stopping uh, the, the world community. The, the proper, the United Nations would be the proper body, but they don't have the teeth and they don't have the power and they don't, and, the, and what they have uh, can't be exercised because of the United States and its, uh, its lapdogs that block it. So uh, the, the United States, the United Nations needs to be uh, reformed a lot too if it's going to serve any kind of a useful purpose, other than a place to talk, uh, yell, yell at each other. Um, but yeah, uh, the United Nations General Assembly, though it has no power, they do have the power to voice opinions and uh, express the opinions of the governments of this world. That is their power, to lend moral authority to the, uh, the, the region to, to rein in Israel and to stop this genocide. And then, uh, you know, the, the, they themselves probably do not have the power to, to disarm Israel uh, without everything blowing up, but uh, at least stopping the genocide and liberating the Palestinian people. Just tell Israel, this is what we're going to do. We're not going to destroy you, but this is what we're going to do. And uh, if you don't prevent us, there won't be any bloodshed. If you try to stop it, then we have to act in the interest of the world and the Palestinian people. As proper government authorities in the interest of justice and peace. Sometimes the sword has to be wielded in the interest of peace and justice. And people should always do that reluctantly, but it's necessary. And it's sometimes delay cannot be allowed to happen. Well, that's the opinion of this old man. And I don't have any uh, representatives from the world outside my door here waiting to hear what I think. So this is the best I can do. Jesus Christ said, you have heard it was said, you shall love your neighbors and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love your enemies and do good to those who despise you. I work for him. <laughs>